You think we can do it all in five minutes, probably? Okay, perfect. Yep. Well, good morning, Chair and Member. It's nice to see you this morning. Thank you for this opportunity. I did. <laughs> Well, let, let me just uh, get right to it because I know there's a lot to be discussed today. Uh, the Antelope Valley delegation is asking for $4 million over the next three years to fund the creation of what uh, we're calling the California Institute for Aerospace. Established in 2000, the University of California system, California institutes have been a tremendous resource for research in various industries. They've uh, successfully addressed critical issues facing the globe and fields of biology, physics, chemistry, economics, and medicine. This institute would strengthen California's position as a global leader in the aerospace industry, increase public-private partnerships, and fully maximize our role in designing and building the long-range strike bomber, which is a contract awarded by the Air Force just recently. California's success in aerospace research, development, and production is not only envied by other states, but highly coveted. The Antelope Valley is home to NASA. The region is home to NASA Armstrong Flight Research Center, the Air Force Test Center at Edwards Air Force Base, Mojave Air and uh, Spaceport, Air Force Plant 42, among many others. Uh, we are the only one with uh, airspace that is protected. And California's aerospace companies in 2012 contributed to $62 billion in industry revenues. We've already seen aerospace industry companies and programs lured away to other states. To help the industry attract and retrain the talent it, it needs to propel it forward, California should continue to invest in the aerospace industry. California, for example, has lost more than 8,000 aerospace jobs since 2002, including Lockheed Martin, which moved its corporate headquarters to Washington, D.C. Between 1998 and 2006, the aerospace industry and the rest of the country lost 12% of its workforce, but California lost more than twice that amount. Most of the losses took place in the aircraft and components manufacturing. In terms of cost, the Assembly Appropriations Committee estimates that it will cost between one and two million to start. Antelope Valley College has agreed to host this institute in its first couple of years, and we've gotten strong industry support to back the initiative. AB 2600 has the potential to revitalize the aerospace industry in the Antelope Valley and once again put, its, put us on the map as the aerospace capital of the entire world. I ask for your support uh, for this budget request and I'm proud to have Assemblyman Scott Wilk with me to testify in support. Thank you, Chair and members. I'm going to be very brief because uh, you have a long day and I w actually want to hear from uh, our leaders that came up uh, from the district. But our vision of this is much like what uh, Stanford was to the Silicon Valley. We believe having a UC Institute uh, there in the Antelope Valley can forge the same kind of uh, research and development and, and be, uh, again, an economic driver for the region. Uh, I think we're all, we're all fully aware that UCs tend to be on the coast and inland communities have been kind of lifted out of the equation. I know now we've got Riverside and we've got UC Merced, but this would be an incredible ad addition not only for our students but for commerce and for the entire state. So with that, I'd like to yield the rest of our time to our guests. Go ahead, Terry. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and members. My name is Terry Norris. I'm a small owner of Precision Labs Calibration. It's a Native American small business, and we've won the California Air Resources Board Small Business of the Year. I see the direct needs of small businesses through my 500 plus customers. I'm also keenly aware of all the educational needs that we have in our Animal Valley because I'm actively involved. STEM related jobs are difficult for us to fill as small businesses because there's no common resource that is readily available for us to utilize. In the first quarter of this year alone, I lost over 10% of our highly trained staff to out of state competitors and employees planning to leave the area. What that does is that created a loss of $150,000 to my company. It's something that reduces my competitiveness with out-of-state competitors. So AB 2600 focuses aerospace education and research. Therefore, it allows small companies to receive higher quality employees while simultaneously saving on costs and time so that we can stay competitive far into the future. In fact, AB 2600 is crucial to our California small businesses to survive. 
Thank you. Larry, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, my name is Larry Grooms, and I'm here on behalf of the Antelope Valley Board of Trade, which is unanimously uh, agreed to uh, not only support but to be a sponsor for this legislation. Uh, providing this model for California's aerospace economy is a rational and affordable next step to both uh, retain and expand our state's leading industry and to put us into a higher orbit for that new frontier, the commercialization of space, which is happening today at the Mojave Air and Space Port in the Antelope Valley. Uh, there are two compelling reasons to locate this uh, this new center of excellence uh, in the Antelope Valley, or what we can often call the Aerospace Valley. Uh, we have, the first is proximity to the state's largest civilian, military, and NASA uh, aerospace employers, and secondly, the Antelope Valley's strategic history as the launch platform for every new piece of aerospace hardware through research, development, testing, and evaluation. I just want to close here with, with a little anecdote that kind of explains the whole uh, context of, of this aerospace valley. Everybody knows about the space shuttle. Very few people know where it was born. It was born in 1963 when a, a NASA Ames researcher came up with the theory that you could build an aircraft that would fly without wings. So in 1963, a handful of NASA people on Muroc Dry Lake at Edwards Air Force Base towed a plywood-shaped uh, vehicle behind a souped-up Pontiac across the lake bed at 120 miles an hour. And that M2F1 official name, unofficial name, flying bathtub, flew. The shape that that, that c collaboration of minds put together resulted in what we all know now as a space shuttle. And we encourage you to please support this bill. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. My name is Diane Walker, and I'm with the Antelope Valley Union High School District and the Antelope Valley East Current STEM Network. As you've heard, the creation of California Institute for Aerospace is the essential next step towards filling one plus million open STEM jobs in California uh, between now and 2020, including those in the aerospace sector. Location of the Institute in the Greater Antelope Valley region would provide a world-class UC research campus <clears throat> excuse me, for our diverse students while at the same time preparing the future workforce to tide, stem the tide of the silver tsunami. The annual budget allocation of $4 million would maximize education gains over the past decade to create and expand engineering and high-tech career technical education pathways begun in K-12 districts in the Greater Antelope Valley. From under 50 students in high school in 2003, it's expanded to nearly 9,000 K-12 students each year in the greater Antelope Valley region, large percentages of whom access related post-secondary education and employment, both in and out of California. Data cited by the Brookings Institute and Career Builder um, support what Mr. Norris has said about the losses suffered by industry per employer losses of 16 to 25,000 for each unfilled job. While some enter the local aerospace workforce, each one who leaves uh, the state diminishes a cri critical talent pool that we have here in California. Also, the uh, estimates are to begin a public institution research one laboratory allocation and faculty packages run in the neighborhood of what AB 2600 contemplates. Investment, therefore, in the California Institute for Aerospace under AB 2600, particularly with the location in the economical Antelope Valley, coupled with the unique opportunities afforded by the gathering of renowned aerospace companies and military um, contractors in the area, is a cost-effective proposition. Thank you for your consideration and support. Thank you for your testimony and, and for your presentation. It, th this is an issue, certainly, that has uh, merits. And uh, it, my views will put it on the on the list to, to consider uh, pending our analysis as far as total revenue in, in the budget, which we'll find out on Friday with the, with the mayor revision. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Mr. Chavez. Well, I'm intrigued by this, um, but I'm a little confused. The four million dollars goes to the 
K through 12 school system? It goes to the Antelope Valley Community College, or does it go to some UC satellite? What, wh where's the four million going? Yeah, what what our plan is is to actually use this will be seed money to actually uh, two million, for example, will be to uh, develop and to hire staff and faculty to organize stakeholder groups so that we can organize the actual institute and get it off the ground. There have been other uh, institutes that have spent uh, a considerable amount of time after they've already begun. We want to actually do it in preparation before we actually get underway, and we believe that this is a cost-effective partnership that will allow us to eventually become self-sustaining. And so the, the money is to actually get things started. And the Institute of Aerospace would be what? Nonprofit, uh, profit, profit It'll be part of the UC system. It'll be part of the UC, I mean, just like the other institutes that they actually have, the research institutes. So it's, it's there to get uh, and to actually bring on um, graduate students and PhD students that they can actually collaborate with industry and they can look to the future and develop. Some of the other institutes have developed as, have been as successful as developing uh, six inventions a week. And uh, that's the kind of uh, collaboration, that's the kind of synergy that we're trying to create here in the aerospace industry, here in the Antelope Valley, so we can become world renowned. So the institute is part of the UC system? Yes. And so the money that we're talking about would go to the UCs? Yeah. Now you said four million, two million is for the uh, startup, you know, cost, the personnel to put the plan together, and the other two million is for what? That would be just part of the operational cost that would take to actually uh, recruit students and, and to actually bring students into the, uh, the arena and to allow us to uh, begin our operations. So at the end of the three years, because this is a three year proposal, four, four, and four, right? So w what would be deliverables after f three years? You know, the sky is the limit as to exactly what the deliverables, deliverables would be, uh, but we believe that with that particular model and the partnerships, the synergy that we would create would be very, very successful. Uh, now I make my comment. The, um, not to understand a little bit better, um, members on the uh, committee here, the aerospace industry is one of the big interests of the Governor's Military Council uh, because we know that a lot of people think of the military strictly, you know, the, the Marines or the Navy, the Army or the Air Force. In reality, the military's growth where they're going is actually in space command and, and aerospace and satellites and how you, you know, control the, mm -hmm. the upper atmospheres in space. So this is of real interest to the Governor's Military Council. So if we're, I got two comments. One is I'd recommend that we some way get on the, on the agenda for the Governor's Military Council because if they could support this, what you actually do is then you get the Governor's support because who actually does the budget is finally is the Governor. So that would be a, a good way to go into the Governor's Military Council. And to, um, I guess to the members here, do, are we ever going to vote on this? Or are we just going to push this aside or how do we want to? Well, today, the, the plan was not to vote on it, but anybody could, could make a motion to do so. The, the, the consideration that I would have, there are a couple other UC ideas that members have that we would, they would put on, on the, uh, basically, uh, consideration list and have an evaluation uh, of them and others once we get the final uh, May revision revenue numbers. So in the consideration list, are we going to have a, um, a uh, are we going to be involved in the consideration list? Or is it going to be, are we going to vote on that, or is that going to be something we'll just see in a budget coming out? Sure. Uh, we, we have the final, we have the May revised hearing in a, a week after the revision comes out, and we can, we can have all the issues that we've heard that, that are outside of the governor's proposal on that, and we can vote on them all up and down. So we'll be able to vote on this? We can, yes. Okay, because I just want to state that I'm going to be very supportive of this, because I think $4 million in something is pretty small when you look at it. It's going to be one of the major industries, you know, in the future. So thank you very much, uh, you, Senator sir. Lackey, Senator Member Wilk, to bring this forward. I think it's of merit. As you're right, historically, um, right where you are is where the, you know, the brainchild of a lot of our space industry. So thank you for bringing it forward. And I, Hope we'll have the opportunity to train our young people to go off in this 
interesting new world. So, thank you, sir. Thank okay, you. thank you again thank you. For, for for that. Thanks very much. And before we begin the, the regular business, we're going to take a, a brief uh, five-minute recess. Right here. Thank you.